Bike build number 16, built by our boy Shane. Shane! Where'd he go? Hey, where'd Shane go? He's gone? <laughs> Can't make fun of his cat when he's not here. What are we gonna do? Bike build number 16, right behind me. I'm gonna go over some of the stuff in the motor. I know you only see me the whole time. I'm gonna point some stuff out. Then we'll do an overview where Randy takes the camera. Nice and smooth and silky past the bike. And I'll tell you what's in it how much horsepower and torque she created, and why we call these the torque eater instead of the ass eater. But the thing that is kind of notable on a lot of our builds is on these push rod tubes, we try to match them to the color of the bike. So when we have time, and we have the capabilities to send stuff off to powder coat and come back, and we can try to paint match stuff we do. It's just a little added touch that's subtle, but it makes the bike stand out. So the lower part of the tube is powder coated. The upper part of the push rod tube is coated. We left the collars black, and then we did the matching lower rocker boxes. It's just nice finishing touches that make the bike look really nice. On this bike, it has the unattainium horsepower incorporated two in one long pipe. On these builds, a long exhaust always makes more horsepower and torque typically than any of the shorter pipes. So this exhaust works really well. They have really nice bends on it. Stainless steel. I'll show you the graph in a minute, but it's 131 cubic inches. It is Harley Davidson's cylinder that we put the torque plates on the top and the bottom. We go, uh, crunch her down and then we final hone her. We're, we're cleaning each side of the cylinder up about one and a half thou and it just allows us to straighten them out a little better, make them nicer for our Moonshine Horsepower CP piston. Flywheel in this guy is a built stock flywheel with the MHP Lightning Rods by CP Carrillo. We then pair that with our CP pistons that we designed. This guy has a negative 0.5 dome, so it's a, it's a dome that comes up, and the reason it's still a negative is because the pockets for the valve reliefs offset the dome so it's still a negative. And the reason being is when we run what we call the 131 ass heater, we're using cams that are 44 degrees and later. We're running a 592 fueling Reaper cam in this bike. That guy closed at 34 degrees, so it closes 14 degrees earlier. Since it's trapping a lot more air in the cylinder on the way up, we have to have less dome. That way we can run it on pump gas still. So the 131 ass heater that we run with that late closing cam or this bike, the torque heater, which is the 131 with the quicker closing cam, both have a corrected compression of right around 10.8 to 1. Corrected compression, that way we can run these on 91 octane and be safe for riding on the streets. We finish these guys off with a pair of our Street Fighter heads. We've been calling them the plus one millimeter oversized valve heads. Now we've named them. These are the Street Fighter plus 1.5 millimeter overstock valve heads done by our partners down at Frankenstein Engine Dynamics. Awesome head, really nice springs. They're set up to go 625 lift, titanium retainers, CNC locks on them, a really good flowing head. And of course, we pair that with the 66 millimeter ported intake manifold with the little wings from Harley in there, which we start off with the Harley 64 millimeter throttle body, and we port it, which gives you the 66 millimeter, and then we pair that with a factory Screaming Eagle 64 millimeter throttle body. And the Harley air cleaners, we've talked about these before. This is the extreme ventilator. The extreme ventilator is nice. This allows the motor to breathe with the side cover. Having the extra filter on the side allows this guy to pull air where it needs. A lot of the air that enters the motor when you're riding down the road is going to be entering the back side of this and the back side here. Most of your air comes in right here. This creates a lot of turbulence. It rolls and then it gets sucked into the back side of the air cleaner. So having this guy exposed right here makes a difference while you're going down the road. And when you buy a Harley Davidson product, the finishes, the paints, the powder coats, the bolts they use, everything fits together very well. They go through a little more R&D and scrutiny than a lot of the other aftermarket companies. Not all of them, but some of them. A little different on this guy is this right here. It's hiding behind the, pi the pipe. But if we can get Randy to maneuver, look, can we see her? Can we see her? 
It's a Baker grudge box, but it's not your typical grudge box. So the grudge box is your six speed. In fifth gear, that's your one to one ratio. Six gears overdrive. So when we are dyno tuning something with a Baker in it, that's a grudge box, we're gonna be doing poles in fifth gear. Now this is an N1 Baker grudge box, which means neutrals all the way at the bottom in the first location. And what makes that really cool is on a stock transmission, when you're in first gear, to go to second, you have to pass neutral second gear. So your pull from first to second is a little bit more than every other gear because you have to pass by neutral. Taking neutral and putting it to the very bottom location on the shifter or the shift drum allows you to go second. It's the same as going to third, fourth, fifth. So it's a quicker from first to second transition in the transmission. Now, the disadvantage, you're on the road, you're in first gear, you don't know, you go to shift down to what you think's first, you hit neutral, you gotta be careful. These are more setups for guys racing, being real competitive with the bikes, want a little advantage, it's a small advantage right there. When you're in traffic, to find neutral is real easy, you just hit down, down, down until you find neutral. I don't know if you guys have ever had like a Honda CRF 50 when you're growing up, but they were pretty much set the same way as a kid, so. You might remember one of those guys. I still have a CRF 50 at the house. I ride it all the time. They're awesome. Easy to find neutral. Other than that, I guess we should show you what she did. Here's the dyno sheet. This is what we're calling the torque heater. And it rolls over 140 foot pounds of torque, around 2,700 RPMs. And then it holds 140 all the way out to about 5,700 RPMs. She's making max torque at 153.2 at 4,200 RPMs. So you have a lot of torque under that curve in the riding range most guys are riding. Most guys are riding from 2,500 to 3,500. And that's where this guy's pretty much making 140, 140 plus foot pounds of torque. Now when you're riding from 3,500 to 5,000, man, you have the meat of your torque right there. You know, the horsepower is really not taking over until you hit 5,200. But once this hits 5,200, it's still a very impressive horsepower number. 156.7 um, horsepower on this motor, and it's got a chain drive. Usually the chain drive, because they're a little heavier, pulls away a little bit of horsepower, especially when we have a brand new chain on her. So this was dynoed with a brand new chain on her. And it's a tight chain, because we know she's gonna be breaking in. The first couple hard rides on a chain conversion, you're loosening up the chain a lot. So if you get a chain conversion on your bike, you have a little maintenance to do under the first thousand to 5,000 miles, your chain is going to actually stretch and you need to pay attention. Correctly adjusted chain is on point. It doesn't make abnormal noise. You start letting it wear and it will contact pieces down here because the Harley wasn't originally designed to have the chain. It'll make noise and it won't react exactly how you want it to. The cool thing about having the, the 530 chain on your bike is you're not worried about ripping a bunch of teeth off. You're not worried about that guy popping. You want to go to bike week, you want to have a good time, you want peace of mind. You're making over 140 plus horsepower, 140 plus foot pounds of torque. Go to the chain if you're going to be aggressive on it. Guys ask us all the time, chain or belt? It's all about how you ride, how you operate your clutch. If you're getting on the clutch and you're giving it power gradually, we don't really see any issues. Even on the big builds, 135 cubic inch, 139 on up. But if you're gonna be letting go of the clutch and you're gonna be popping it, you're doing wheelies, you're gonna be doing rolling burnouts because you wanna show your friends how awesome your motorcycle is and how good you are at riding, chain conversion is for you. That don't sound good at all. No one wants that. No one needs a Harley sounds like that. Curly bike. <laughs> bike build number 16. Street Glide Special with the MHP, the Moonshine Horsepower 131 Torque Eater. You want torque, you want horsepower? We got you. Hey, that's a torque eater too? It's probably his favorite build right there. Torque Eater 131 with a Thunder Header. Thunder Header or die? Or die? Another pipe on titanium. We have them occasionally. <laughs>